Welcome to the Geeky Girls Knit Podcast. I'm Cece, also known as Java Pearl. I'm Dami, also known as Damaris Dash Bit Weird. And we're glad to have you today. Today is Wednesday, the 9th of March, 2016, and this is episode 183. Just a teenager to go until we're to 200. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'd like to say a big welcome back. We love you guys. To all our returning viewers, and a big hiya to any new viewers. Thanks for giving us a shot. We hope you enjoy the show. Um, Dami, we have some people who introduced themselves in the RAV group this week. Why don't you give them a shout out? Jessica, who is Jay Bismay from South Carolina, and Tanya, who is Hajnat from Finland. It's Tanya with an H spelled backwards. Hajnat. Welcome. Anyway, if, if, if that was butchered, we're sorry. We, re- we welcome you anyway. Um, so Demi, if somebody is not a member of our Ravelry group, what should they do and why? Join and introduce yourself in our introductions thread because we will give you a shout out on our next episode and you will be able to participate in our cows and giveaways. That's right. In fact, we have a giveaway winner announced today and an- another giveaway ongoing. Mm-hmm. And we have a lot to talk about today. So we probably should just get started. Here we go. <laughs> going to talk about what's on our needles. So what's on your needles, damn it. Um, don't laugh at me. <laughs> I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing at the conversation we were having between the intro segment and here. We might recreate it for the outtake <clears throat> segment or the, uh, the, what's it called? The, I don't know. The final segment after the credits, what's that called? The outro? What's on your needles? Um, a pair of socks for my friend. I finished the heels. Dang, you're going fast. Mm-hmm. So now I have the leg and the cuff. And are you gonna how tall are you gonna do the leg to the to the toe box? The toe box? Yep, right there. I think so. The start of the toe box. <laughs> toe box. That's what I call it, toe box. Okay. Okay. Um anything else on the needles? No. But you've been thinking about some some on the needles because you said you were going to look for yarn for what was the name of the pattern? I don't, um, I don't know. The one you said it's, you wanted to get the variegated for. Oh, it's in my queue. Um, it's flames. It is flames. Q. Flame on. That's not the name of it. I believe it had three words in the name. There it is. Optical delusion, con conflagration. Conflagra- conflagration, <laughs> by Kim McBrian Evans, and that's a shawl, scarf. It's a scarf. It's a scarf. Scarf wrap. Scarf wrapish thing. So you're thinking about doing that. Yeah. You're also planning to look for your yarn for <laughs> what's the sweater? Yakushima. Is that the name of it? Yes. Mm. By who? Did it be? I don't know. By Justina Lorkowska. It's a worsted weight sweater. Letty's Knits. I know it by that. Letty's Knits. So you're plan. It's a cardigan. So you're planning mm-hmm. to look for yarn for that at EYF. Mm-hmm. Anything else that you're going to be looking for yarn for at EYF? I don't think so. Okay. Y- you've pulled your yarn out of your <clears throat> closet recently and put it into some storage boxes. So now you have better access to your yarn. So mm-hmm. maybe you can use up some stash. All right. Anything else you would like to talk about project related? Mm, no. So what's on your needles? What's on my needles? I have three things on the needles this week. I know. Because I couldn't just have two things like last week. So I am working on my zigzag blanket. This is the 10 stitch zigzag by Frankie Brown. And on US 4's 3.5 mil needles. And the yarn I'm currently using is third vault yarn sheep, sheep, sheep's mechanic, (laughs) sheep mechanic sock. Ship mechanic sock in the faster than light colorway. So here's how it's knitting up. So I got, I think, nine zigzags this week. So I have three more zigzags in this stripe, 
and then one more stripe. So I have 23 zigzags I need to have done by the end of March mm -hmm. to reach my goal of 100 in the first quarter of the year. And let's see if I can... Do you see how big this blanket's getting? Yeah. It's not going to fit in this bag for very much longer. Um, and then next up, I have um, a pair of socks. These are my Hugs and Kisses Loop Socks. Um, and it's from my free vanilla cappuccino sock pattern. Did you say that? Did you say what yarn you were using? No. Would you like to speak again? Yeah, the, uh, these are CC's vanilla cappuccino socks. And they're on US 1.5, 2.5 millimeters. And the yarn is West Yorkshire Spinner's Signature 4 Ply in the Wood Pigeon colorway. So hold on, let me let them see them. Okay. Um, so I'm using the same pattern and the same size needles, except for I'm using my Zoom Zooms. And you're doing two at a time toe up on Magic Loop. Mm -hmm. And the yarns I'm using are, so the solid pink is Holiday Yarns Flock Sock in the Pink Lady colorway. And the multi variegated is Knitting in France Sparkles in the Gradient Pink colorway. So I don't even know that I had this sock on the needles last week. Because I, I can't remember. So the first one's finished. And I cast on the second one, toe, foot, heel, and now I'm working on the leg. And I probably have, let's see here. Probably about 25-ish more rows of the leg and then the cuff. Um, so my goal is to get these finished in the next couple of days so that I can cast on the socks I'm going to have at EYF and it's that yarn right there the pink and green and white um, so get those on the needles because I need to have those finished by the end of March as well and then my new project that I cast on is um, the Queensland Beach by Fiona Alice and this is from the um, Take, Heart. Take Heart book Pom Pom Press's first book that we reviewed a few weeks ago mm -hmm. speaking of if you entered to win the copy of the book and you have not listened to that segment from a few weeks ago, the winner has not claimed her prize. So you should, uh, if you entered, you might want to go back and check to see if you were the winner. Okay? Okay. Um, so I am knitting this in. I'm on US 4, 3.5 mil needles, and I'm knitting this in Rainbow Heirloom Sweater in the Perfect Pink colorway. And here it is so far. So you do a uh, provisional cast on, and you cast on a lot of stitches. When I first cast it on, I was like, that is going to be a really wide headband. But then once you start doing the cable, it really sucks it in. So I have done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm on the ninth cable, and I think I have to do 14 total. So hopefully I have enough yarn. Um... And it's, it's stretchy, so you want negative ease. But I also think the back looks kind of cool. What do you think? Mm -hmm. So I guess you could make it reversible if you wanted to. So um, I am working on that. I would like to have it finished before EYF because Fiona Alice is going to be there. And I could show her to like wear it and it would be beautiful. So that's everything that's on my needles right now. Hmm. So let us, I was trying to think, is there anything that I wanted to tell them that I was going to be looking for at UIF? Sweater quantity for what sweater is it that I'm going to do? Oh my gosh, my brain just totally went. What kind of sweater is it? Oh, oh, the person sweater. Archiform. Archiform by K.M. Bedigan. Um, Dammy helped me research yarn um, that vendors... Uh, I'm not making this very clear at all. There's a list of the vendors that are going to be at EYF, and Dammy helped me go through and see which ones were, carry the weight yarn that I need for that sweater, 
and then we'll see if they have it um, at EYF. If not, I can order it. And then I'm going to be getting the the pink yarn from Kettle Yarn Co. to go with those three for the um, shawl by Lise Tilbrook. That's probably all that's like on my list. That's what I'm looking for. But you know, things always pop into my shopping basket. Mm -hmm. Um... There's some other vendors that are not yarn related, but are in the fiber world that I'm excited to look at some of the stuff they're going to be carrying. You also said you were going to look for buttons for your yes shirt, for your cardigan that you're looking for the yarn for. Okay, that's all that I know right now. My brain, if you could see in my brain, it is like right now because I'm trying to get stuff ready with the book and trying to get ready for the booth at EYF next week. And so, thankfully, Dami has been like, okay, you're very stressed out. How can I help you? And I go, I have this massive list. Well, let me see. What can you do? Okay, here, do this. And then she does it, and it's amazing. So, she's part of the Java Pearl Designs team. The best daughter. That's your daughter. The best daughter in the world. All right, um, I think that's enough rambling. We should talk about FOs. Actually, FO. One FO. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>
unicorn and a crown crown and a throne and then I also got a coffee set of course so coffee cups and a coffee pot I think it's fabulous mm -hmm. thank you so much Boga and she also sent a prize that we are going to use in the sheepy spring cow so we'll show you that when we get to uh, that part of the episode thank you so much Boga you're the best love you much love 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 um, I promised y'all last week that I would show you my puntilla sweater this week um, this is a pattern by Hohi Locatelli and the yarn is knitting in France sparkles in the something about CC colorway and the black is from Ripple's Crafts. Crafts. I love the lace. Isn't that stunning? Um, so there's that. I love how it fits. I love this drop shoulder. Isn't that cool? Because then you get the seam um, down part of the arm. It fits so well. It's really cozy. This is the first. I tried. I had it on for just a few minutes the other day, but this is the first time like I've worn it. Worn it. Um, this same lace is along the bottom hem as well. We are going to try to remember to insert a photo or photos. We're going to try to, as long as it's not raining, we'll probably try to pop outside after we finish recording and take a few photos because um, I need it for my project page anyway. So we'll put those in. But oh, I'm so in love with this sweater. Um, and hopefully I can wear it for EYF as long as it's not too warm. I'll probably tuck another t-shirt, uh, not t-shirt, but a, like a short sleeve, my shirt in my bag of stuff to take to EYF the day I want to wear this, just in case I get too warm, uh, because it is a long sleeve sweater, so. Dammy, you have something to tell us about, and I don't even know how we got on the topic, but it was the other night when we were watching TV. We were talking, you were talking about Bill Clinton. Oh, because it, when we were talking about, um, inhaling <laughs> and the meaning of the word is is I believe but how did we get to that I don't know how we got to that something 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 like happens in our house something something happens and then it's like oh this reminds me of this and then you <laughs> end up like 12 miles from where you originally started but because we somehow got to the president stuff, and you've been reading about president stuff, mm -hmm. and so you gave us this um, gem of information that we didn't know, and it's really <laughs> funny, so I was like, that is going in the show notes. So, Dammy, would you please give us this laughter-filled yummy? Okay, so, you know, John Quincy Adams, sixth president of the United States, son of John Adams, who is the second president of the United States, uh... Another fact, he was the first president to be photographed. Interesting. I don't, I don't think it was while he was in office, but I might be wrong. I don't remember. Okay. But, um... <laughs> uh, I'm just, like, building up suspense to this. You <laughs> might also know him because of how he got into the into office. The corrupt Through the bar door? The corrupt bargain... Which you will have learned about, hopefully, in your U.S. history classes. Well, but what if somebody's not from the U.S.? Then they will not have known this. Google it! It's on Wikipedia. There's a whole page dedicated to it. Uh... <laughs> so... Are y'all ready for this? <laughs> so John Quincy... Uh, believe... <laughs> John Quincy, he was a slightly eccentric sort. He believed that, uh, that he, during this time, the theory of a hollow earth was very popular. And so he believed that the earth was hollow and that there were... <laughs> Sorry! There were mole people at the center of it and he wanted to conduct trade with them. The mole people. At the center of the earth. At the center of and the earth. And he authorized an expedition to go to the center of the earth, but if I'm remembering correctly, Congress denied it. Because mole people? 
what did, I love junk Quincy Adams. <laughs> what did you think that the mole people had that they would want to trade with? I don't know. I think I think it was something about gold. I don't remember. Exactly. So there's gold in the center of the hollow earth. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> Gosh. Oh, you're making me cry. <laughs> I love John Quincy Adams. So there is your yummy humor for the week. John Quincy Adams and the mole people. Mole people. That might have to be something in our title about the mole people. Would you like to say anything else about John Quincy Adams? He's actually being mentioned a lot in the book I'm reading right now. I guess his writings were a valuable insight to early American history. Fabulous. Fabulous. Um, all right. Well, let's talk. We should have grabbed a copy of the book. It's like right over there. Do you want to, mm -hmm. can you stand up or can you, or will it be a mess? It will be a mess. Okay. Just imagine. I'm Coffee with Cece. Y'all have seen the book. I showed it last week. It's so good. So... First, let me say a million thank yous, a million, billions, gazillion, trebazillion. That's not a word. Um, zillion. <laughs> That's not a word. A lot of zillion <laughs> <laughs> thank yous for those of you who have been pre-ordering the book because I had such um, a huge amount of pre-orders that I had to order a second print run of the book and I'm about to cry. So thank you. So um, the second print run got here yesterday so that I will have books to have at EYF. Um, if you ordered, if you pre-ordered a copy of the print book, that will be shipping out on Monday the 14th. Um, and the ebook will go live on Thursday the 17th. If you pre-ordered um, the print book, there's a coupon code inside the front cover for you to get your ebook. Um, so the, yeah, the ebook will go live on the 17th, Thursday the 17th, and then the patterns will be available for individual purchase on the following Monday, which would be the 21st, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, yeah, 21st. Um, and any books that are pre-ordered after Sunday the 13th will not ship until after EYF. So, if you want to make sure and get yours in the first shipment, you need to place your order by this Sunday. Um, I want to say a gigantic, huge thank you, love you muchly, to Jilly, Vegan Jilly, um, of the Knitting Broomstick podcast. She did a review of my book in her new episode that just went live today, um, and it made me cry. I've been crying a lot. I have to talk about crying in, in TV segment too mm -hmm. because I was like sobbing crying. Um, so, um, and Jilly had pre-ordered my book and so I offered her two copies of the ebook to give away. So if you... <coughs> sorry, illness. And so I, I feel like I sound a little froggy. Um... Uh, I probably need some tea when we get done. Um, stress and time of year and weather and yeah. Um, so thank you so much to Jilly. There are other podcasters that are going to be reviewing the book and doing giveaways in the forthcoming weeks. So um, stay tuned. I will try to remember to social media them as they go, as they happen. So, but thank you Jilly for the lovely, lovely review. Um, so, you guys have seen five of the patterns. Mm -hmm. They have seen strawberries and cream frappe socks, I love you more than pumpkin spice socks, peppermint mocha socks, caramel latte socks, the coffee date shawl, and today you get to see the final two patterns. So first up, and this is the very first pattern in the book, um... This is the French Vanilla Cappuccino Socks pattern. Now, you might know that I already have a pattern called Vanilla Cappuccino Socks, which is a free pattern on Ravelry if you subscribe to my newsletter. Well, this is a step up because not only do you get toe-up instructions, you get 
cuff down instructions, you do get my modified short row heel, and you get written and photo instructions of how to measure your foot to make the perfect fitting sock. Featuring my foot. Featuring Damni's foot. <laughs> I have no idea what that, that was. That was stitch markers, I think. Um, yeah, featuring Damni's foot on my lap. It's so beautiful. With her smirking in the background in one of the pictures. <laughs> yeah. So, um, there's several, um, in the book, there are several different, um, yarns that I've used to do it. This is one of them. This is very colorful yarnings in the 12 Days of Christmas colorway, sparkly. I don't know if you can see the sparkles. There's a little bit of sparkle. So, um, yeah, so this is a step up, up from my free pattern, um, toe up and cuff down instructions and my modified short row and all the measuring and everything to make you get a perfect fitting sock. The, uh, the last pattern, this is a perfect pattern for self-striping yarn. This is the Espresso Macchiato sock. So, the design element is a series of rows that have eyelets in it that remind me of the foam on top of an espresso macchiato. So you can choose how to do this. What I had Dami do when she knit the sample, so there are four colorways in this repeat. So every time she got to this pale tan, she did the design element, and then she knit in stockinette until the next tan repeat. But I also like, if you like, push it down a little bit, you have like these do you remember these kind of socks in the 90s where you had them like squish down? That's what it reminds me of. This is a toe up and cuff down pattern. So I actually went in and looked because somebody asked. Three of the six sock patterns are both toe up and cuff down and the other three are toe up only. So there's a good mix. So this yarn is Knitting Goddess. I saw it was so strange. Yeah, at the Asaro self striping colorway. So this is Espresso Macchiato. I love them. And that makes seven patterns. So, if you have not pre-ordered the book, where do they go to do that, Dami? JavaPearlDesigns.com That is correct. And um, pre-orders of the <clears throat> physical book will continue... If you want it shipped out on the 14th, you need to place your order by Sunday the 13th. Um, Pre-orders for the optional project bag have ended because we got to the deadline date, but also we got pretty much to the, this is all the fabric that Sam had <laughs> for, him, for these. So um, those will also be shipping out on Monday, the book with the optional project bag. And you can also go ahead and pre-order the ebook. On Ravelry, there's a link on my javapearldesigns.com website uh, that tells you where to go to pre-order it. Yay! So that is all the news about Coffee with Cece. Thank y'all. Y'all are the best. Um, a real quick Whole30 check-in. I'm on day 23. Mm. Can you believe how fast this, mu this, these, this has gone? It feels like I was just on day one the other day. It's going well. Um, I feel like I have lost some weight slash, slash inches just in how like my t-shirts are fitting because, okay, this is probably more information than you care to know, but part of my fibromyalgia is I have sensitivity to how clothing fits. So I can't wear um, like jeans, the fabric of them just like is painful but I also tend not to wear um, trousers with a uh, button and zipper because that is also painful so most of the clothing that I wear is very very stretchy so um, around the house I tend to wear yoga pants and t-shirts but when I go out I have several like really long kind of knit fabric skirts that I tend to wear so since everything is so stretchy it's kind of hard to tell but t-shirts seem to be fitting better. So, that's positive. 
I think that I probably am going to continue on to at least a whole 60. So another 30 days. Um, but we will see. Um, I think I told them previously that I'd been able to cut my pain medicine down by some, by 12%. So that's positive. So, yay. Thank you to those who are checking on me and supporting me. I really appreciate it. All right, do we have anything else for yummies beyond our normal stuff? I don't think so. Okay, so let's talk about hashtag GGK Crafty Pad. Why don't you give them info about it while I get some water? It stands for Geeky Girls Knit Crafty Photo A Day Challenge. We have a list of prompts for each month. You take a look at the prompt for that day, post a picture related to it anywhere you like, but we pick our favorites from Instagram. That's right. So mm -hmm. March's theme is colors except for the two days of EYF, and we'll talk about the prompts for that in just a couple minutes. So um, what are we about to show them? Two photos from us that we liked and five photos from other people that we liked. So here come the photos. This song is in my head. So those were our favorite photos. Great job, you guys. Mm -hmm. um, so it's never too late to participate. All you need to do is look at the prompts list. Mm -hmm. I don't know what today's prompt is. Cream, maybe? I think it's cream for today. You take a picture of something cream related. I guess you could take a picture of sour cream if you really wanted to, although that's not what we were thinking. We were thinking cream the color. Like... This Our is kind of walls. like this is kind of a creamy color. This this card has creamy color. Hence, you probably know what my picture is going to be for today. Um, take a picture, post it on Instagram. Make sure you use the hashtag GGK Crafty Pad because that's how we find your photos. Um, it's not necessary for you to tag Dammy and I in the photos. I mean, unless you're like posting a picture of us <laughs> or something, um, just putting the hashtag, hashtag GGK Crafty Pad will make it where we see it and it will be in the queue of what we look at to pick our favorites. Yep. Uh, so we hope you'll join us. All right. Why don't you tell us about upcoming events? You know what? I have another event and I did not put it in there. And I don't know all the details off the top of my head. Maybe I will look while Dammy starts talking. Okay, so, Edinburgh Yarn Festival here in Edinburgh. It's next week, the 18th and 19th of March, 2016. Yes, it is. Ooh. Yes, don't, it's like nine days and, uh. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's, it's. We set up on Thursday. Yeah, so eight days away, because we have to set up. <clears throat> mm-hmm. It's next week. There's a lot of work <laughs> to still get done. Um, so, I'll be vending again with Sam of Knit Run Dig. Do you remember our booth number? They released... G7, I want to say? That sounds right. They released the map layout <clears throat> to the vendors, They but they, will, they haven't released it to everyone yet, but they will be releasing it uh, in the next few days. We are in... G7. Yes. You are correct. Yes. And we have some lovely neighbors, including our friend Rachel from Porpoise Fur and our friend Kirsten from Afaya. Um, and we also have some other friends that will be vending. So come by the booth. You can get an autographed copy of my book um, in the booth, as well as you can purchase all of my single patterns. And Sam has some amazing project bags that she will be having in the booth. So we're very excited. So we hope you'll come see us. Dammy will be there too. I we'll, will. We'll be kind of rotating the three of us so that we can... I love being in charge of the booth. 
makes so, me feel powerful. So you have to be like, you must buy my mama's book. You must buy this book. Here, take it. So that means I will need to make sure and leave a few autographed copies in the booth when I'm not there, just in case somebody wants one that's Because I can't autograph it No, for you. I was like saying different things well, that had to I, happen. I, I could autograph it because like I'm a model in it. Like you could. could. If, if you want me to, I will autograph your book. But you, I will. But you couldn't autograph it like I'm autographing it. Yeah. And I, my autograph is pretty dang awesome. Because you even get a little picture drawn by me. Um, yeah, so come by the booth. And we are also doing the special Geek Girls Knit Edinburgh Yarn Festival 2016 GGK Crafty Pad, Crafty Selfie. <laughs> I'm putting this on the screen now, okay? So, if you take pictures that are Crafty Selfie related and hashtag them with three hashtags. Hashtag GGK Crafty Pad, mm -hmm. hashtag EYF2016, and hashtag GGK EYF16 Crafty Selfie. That's really long. It is really <laughs> long, but it encompasses... And there's not a limit on how much you can type on Instagram. So, you're okay. So, um, and then we will randomly be drawing prize winners after EYF is over. Okay? Um, all right. The thing that I did not have in the show notes, I'm going to be vending at the East Central Scotland Guild of Spinners, Weavers, and Dyers Suppliers Day in Fife. On Saturday, the 2nd of April, from 11 to 3.30. Um, I'm not, I, I want to say it's probably open to the public, but I don't really, really know. That's all the information I have on that right now. So, I will be there. If you will be there, let me know and we'll say hi. And I'll have my book. And I will have some of Sam's project bags. Sam's won't be, Sam won't be able to attend, but I will have some of her project bags. All right, and then our third upcoming event is the Geeky Puffin Nippalooza, which we announced last week will be in Farnham, UK, from Thursday the 10th of November through Sunday the 13th of November. Signups are going to begin on Monday the 11th of April for our newsletter subscribers. So go to our show notes, click the link, and sign up for... The newsletter if you want to be in on the newsletter subscriber sign up um, because we will not open sign ups to the general public until 24 hours after our newsletter, newsletter subscribers have a chance to sign up. Um, you can also sign up for the newsletter just by going to geekypuffinknitpalooza.com and it's in the sidebar. Um, and we will be announcing teachers hopefully soon. We're waiting for a couple of contracts to come back so that we can announce all four teachers at once. And we will also be announcing costs and everything in the forthcoming weeks. Um, I will be spending some time with Sam down in her home near Farnham before signups start to iron out the final cost details. But we will let you know that as soon as we can. All right, I think that is everything for Yummies. Yep. All right, let's move on to the next segment. And now we're going to talk about what we're reading and watching. Yes, so what are you reading? I am reading Alexander Hamilton by Ron Chernow. Alexander Hamilton. Yes. I don't know the rest of the song. Alexander Hamilton. What would you like to tell us about Alexander Hamilton? <laughs> Which was the, 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 the inspiration for the Hamilton musical by Lynn Man manuel Miranda. Did I say it right? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Tell us about it now. <laughs> I'm about 40% through it. I've just gotten through the dinner table bargain. 
which established the Potomac as the permanent capital of the United States. Interesting. The, Potom- this, the Potomac region. This is a longer book than the last one you read. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's longer. Much longer. Um, it's, it's his entire life. It's Alexander Hamilton. This is her fault. She's the one that made me listen to it. Would you like to say anything else about no person that I could sing his name for you? No. no. Okay. We talk about okay. Books. I'm reading. I'm still reading a travelogue of the interior, finding your voice and God's heart in the Psalms by Karen Dabajian. <laughs> so I'm continuing to read that. Um, I'm also reading Wild in the Hollow on chasing desire and finding the finding the broken way home by Amber C. Haynes. Oh my gosh, it makes me cry. It's really good. And then fiction-wise, I read a bunch of stuff I'm not telling you because a lot of it was crap. You know, when you get free books on Amazon, sometimes that happens. But the one book that I do want to tell you about is The Darling Songbirds by Rachel Heron. It's her brand new book that just came out. I meant to look and see. Rachel was here in Edinburgh probably about a year ago. And we interviewed her and she was in an episode called, in which it's the real, or the, the, I don't don't think real (laughs) was there, in which it's the Rachel Heron. Look back through our, our episode list. It's a really good episode. Um, so let me tell you about this book, The Darling Songbirds. It is Nashville meets Gilmore Girls. Okay. The main guy character is totally Luke. But his name is Nate. But it's even four letters like Luke. It's really good. There is some adult content, just to let you know that. Uh, but I really, really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. I kind of devoured it almost in one sitting because it was so good. Yummy books. <laughs> so, way to go, Rachel. And that's all I'm going to tell you about that I'm reading. So let's talk about some television. Why don't you start us out? Okay. We finished re-watching season four and are re-watching season five of Star Trek Deep Space Nine. And we finished re-watching season two and are re-watching season three of Star Trek Voyager. Yes. What do we want to say about these? I want to say Odo. Odo is a human now. Yes. When does he get turned back into a changeling? I know that's a thing that happens. I have no idea. I don't recall this. <clears throat> I don't like, re- he does. Like, at the end of the series, he is a changeling again. I don't know. My brain does not remember this. Um, and let's see what else. Voyager, the Ferengi, mm-hmm. the wormhole. Captain Sulu! Yeah, it was the 30th anniversary of Star Trek episode for Voyager. And this year is Star Trek's 50th anniversary. <laughs> that I was 20 so years ago. Old. It was 20 old years and ago. Old. That means I graduated high school 21 years ago. <laughs> um, and we haven't watched Deep Space Nine's. 30th anniversary special. But it's soon. Trials and tribulations. Tribulations. Tri- tribulations. Tribble. Not, not tribulations. No, tri- I was trying to say tribulations, but it tried to come out as tribulations. And later in this season is Dr. Bashir, I presume. I have a lot of feelings about the episode. Yes. So you will probably have a lot to say when that episode, we watch that episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I watched um, a couple episodes of season three of Parenthood yesterday. Um, the Hubs and I finished watching season one of Roswell. Oh, the sheriff knows now, and he's helping them. And there's a fourth alien girl, and the aliens are like paired up now because like so we saw a message from like the I don't know the. The mother of two of the aliens. And she sent them to Earth to try to save 
fate, their planet or something. And so now there's two and two aliens paired up, her son with his new bride and her daughter with, I don't remember what his role was. But now, but, but then what happens to Liz because she was dating the son. And we have not started season two yet. Okay. I know, there was like all this information in the last episode. I was like, what? Yeah. Um, we are watching season one of Blind Spot. Mm -hmm. They found a missing flight plane. Mm -hmm. And we have the very important questions of why did she plan all of this? And what is the plan? We have a new episode to watch. Maybe after we finish editing the podcast, we can watch it. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to talk about the next one or you want me to keep talking? You. Okay. Castle Season 8. We've actually watched two episodes of this since we recorded last. Castle's trying to remember about his missing eight weeks. And he discovered in last night's episode that... He has something to do with the lock sat situation that caused all of Cass, uh, not Cass, uh, Beckett's uh, colleagues and all that to get killed. And so what's going to happen is he, he sees a video from himself. Is he going to do what his, he told himself to do? Or is he going to tell Beckett in hopes that they can deal with the whole lock sat situation and they can go back to being married in real life publicly now? And guess who was the guest star? Who is the guest star? Do you know? Tell them. Summer Glau. So Castle and she were competing for a spot in the Great Detective Society. Mm. Oh, and they also <laughs> found out, um, what's his daughter's name? Alexis. Yeah, Alexis found out that, what's her name, That the lady? Haley. That Haley had connections to Castle's missing weeks. She's the one that had the video. Mm -hmm. And the lock, the combination lock for the video, was something from an unpublished short story he wrote when he was 17. Ooh. How about that? Why don't you talk about the next thing? Because... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Marvel's Agent Carter. We finished watching season two. So that means Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is back this week. Do we get to watch it tonight? Oh, yeah. Because it's Wednesday. I forgot. I forgot we watched, it was Wednesday. We watch things a day after they air in the U.S. So this was on, it, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was on Tuesday night, so we watch it on Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday is Marvel Day. Uh, so Peggy and Sousa are together, though. They were kissing. They were. <laughs> <laughs> but then, at oh. the end... <laughs> okay. This was the week for emotional TV. <laughs> okay. Well... Thompson is kind of a jerk. Yes, this but still. Okay. He got at the end of the episode. He got shot. And we don't and really so know I'm, that he's dead or not. I'm. I'm assuming he's dead. I'm assuming he's not. Ooh. <laughs> I'm assuming. So, are we getting a season three? Hopefully, we found out last year around May. I think it was. Do you know how the ratings have been? No. Me neither. I'm assuming they've been good. So hopefully we'll get a season three. Mm -hmm. So we will watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. tonight. Tonight. With. I don't remember with, what happened last. Are they going to give us a previously? They, they will. Ward is a zombie. I remember that. Yeah. Don't you remember? No. He is. He's a zombie. How is he a zombie? The... The thing from the other side. Oh! <laughs> you remember yeah. now. I remember now. He's a zombie. I wouldn't have called him a zombie, yeah, but he, I know he, what you mean. He got killed. He got killed, and now he's alive again. Is he's Okay, possessed. here's a question that may be a stupid question. Is the stuff from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. the same stuff as from Agent Carter? The The black stuff. I don't know. It might be. It's very well possible. Z what's it called in, in... Zero Matter. Zero Matter. We might have to research that. 
He might be. I don't know. I don't know either. I know. So I guess that was not a stupid question. I know, buddy. Okay. You don't know, buddy, if that was a stupid <laughs> question? Thanks. Okay. What's, what's the next thing? In CIS season 13. You made a lot of notes. I did. And you properly capitalized them all. Yeah, usually I'm like typing on my phone and I'm like, oh, forget the capitals. Just type it. Um, so McGee <laughs> recreated the crime scene using food, including broccoli and mashed potatoes. And corn cobs. Corn cobs, I that too. I think the corn cobs were, no, the corn cobs were the cars. I can't remember what were the And he put wheels the on them. What were the wheels of the... The carrots. Yes. It was so funny. I don't know what the body was. I don't know. I don't remember. Was it rolls? Maybe. I don't remember. But Delilah was not happy with him for ruining dinner. And then Tony playing the piano and singing. And then all of a sudden he's singing about the case to the music he's playing. And his date is like, what the crap is going on here? And she like, when she left, she gave him his, her email address. Not because she wants another date, because she, but because she wanted to know what happened with the case. And the hysterical part at the end, they were all trying to crowd into the lift to get away, but Gibbs put his hand in the door right at the last second so that they had to keep working, even though they'd been working for overnight long hours. Yes. Um, the Hubs and I are watching NCIS New Orleans Season 2. There was the father-daughter piano singing duet, and it was very sweet with, with oh, pride. And his daughter by Scott Bakula. It was very sweet. They were singing under pressure. They were singing I, I under pressure. I thought it was ice, ice baby. I know I did it first too. <laughs> I was like, what? What? This is like, because it was, and then it was under pressure. Because she was debating whether to stay in school studying piano or not to. And he told her she was an adult and she needed to finish her commitment of the term. And then she could make a decision. Um, the Hubs and I are watching Rizzoli and Isle, season six. There was lots of cold remedies. Maybe we need to try some of these cold sinus remedies that they were, they were very bizarre. She was like wrapped, uh, uh, Mara was like wrapped up in like blankets and she looked like, um, like it, she looks like she was in one of those like full body sleeping bags that it's over your head and it's tight and, and then she had like a lamp, like a sun lamp shining down on her. I guess she was trying to sweat it out or something. I don't know. It was really funny, though. All these bizarre remedies they were coming up with. Do you want to talk about the next one? Um, <sighs> Emotions. <laughs> sure. Uh, season 11 of Criminal Minds. <laughs> so emotional. Derek. Yes. He, he almost died. He did. But he's okay. And he's getting married. Uh-huh. And the baby. No, now, now three members of the team will have little babies. Yes. Yes. Um, and you're the next Although, one too. Oh, sorry. No, Go ahead. Jack, Jack isn't a little baby anymore. No, he's not. And neither is, aw, oh, I can't remember Gigi's first child's name. I don't know. Oh, but they aren't little babies anymore. No. I just realized. <laughs> We don't see them on the screen often, so it makes us feel like they're the same age as last time we saw them. I know, yeah, they're just little babies. No, wait, what? Jack is like, what, like five or six now? No, he was born like in season four? He's like seven? Oh my gosh! Holy crap. <laughs> He's not a baby anymore! Do you want to talk about the next show too? Uh, we're watching season four of Elementary. Yeah, things happen. I like see it in my head, but I can't like put <laughs> words to it. Oh, they're with the captain, Captain Gregson's girlfriend. Yes. With MS, she's sick, and Joan helped him. To, to, that was sweet. I can't remember what the case was though. It's in buildings oh the airspace yes that's what it was and they had built a shorter building and yeah um colony season one 
Where are the aliens? They're in space. We did see space, so I guess we're we making... got the moon. We're making progress, so apparently the factory is... It, is it on the moon, or is it just... Yeah, on the moon. Somewhere in space, close to Earth. So, but where are the aliens? We have noisy neighbors. So hopefully you can't hear the child pounding around on the ceiling upstairs. <laughs> it's very annoying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Colony. Uh, Grimm, season five. Nick and Monroe are in Germany, and they fell in a hole, and there's Vesson after them, and Nick and Adeline are together. Did they get to Germany through the hole? No, they flew on the plane. Oh. But they were trying to find, they're trying to find the thing from the Seven Keys map. Didn't I tell you about this last time? Yes. So, so Nick and Monroe went, got fake passports. Even though Why Nick, didn't they use real passports? Well, because they didn't want to travel under their own names because the Black Claw is after them. So they, they, they got fake passports. That's which, illegal. It is illegal, and you know, Nick is a cop. But he still did it anyway. So they flew to Germany, and then they drove, and they went to this church where they thought that this thing, that they don't know what it is, but it's powerful, was going to be. And the church, the, all the people are Vesson, but they didn't know that. But he knew, they knew that Nick is a Grimm. And so then Nick and Monroe like looked at the maps again and were like, well, maybe it's on the top of this hill. So they go on the top of the hill. And so they're going. And then the Vessen are like coming after them because they're like, oh, this Grim is going to kill us. We're going to kill him first. <laughs> and then Nick and Monroe are on the hill. And, and they, they find this stone and they pull it out. And then they like start digging. <laughs> and the Vessen are still coming after them and then the Vessen are almost there and then the hole like collapses and they fall in the hole and that was the end of the episode oh no <laughs> so now we're waiting for the next episode now the mm -hmm. most emotional episode of TV that we watched this week called The Midwife series 5 finale I'll put an extra spoiler here because I know they don't get it in the States until after we do. But I'm about to, like, majorly spoil it. So if you don't want to know, you need to, like, fast forward. Okay? I warned you. <sighs> Sister. Evangeline. Evangeline. I was like, it's a vowel. Why can't I find it? Evangelina died in the episode. And I'm, like, sobbing, crying. Like, the whole episode. Oh, my gosh. It was so sad. Were you crying? Yes. It was so really emotional. It, it was lovely that her last day, she was able to be there when a new baby was born, and she, like, bathed the new baby and everything. And then she's exhausted, and they got back to the to the to Nonata's house and she sits down by the fire and what's the Barbara. yeah Barbara like covers her up with a blanket next to the fire and then oh what's his name Fred Fred what would I do without her she's got all the names Fred comes in to light the fire and he knocks over the fireplace tools and it doesn't like startle her awake and then he realizes that she's dead and it was so sad And they also discovered about the drug that they believe is co was causing the birth defects. Mm -hmm. And so the doctor was very upset because he, he feels guilty because he prescribed it. So there is going to be a Christmas special of Call the Midwife. I am like, oh, and I know I need to drink water because I'm about to tell you about another show. Oh, and, and, yeah. And it's been renewed for series six. Mm -hmm. So. All right, my least favorite show in the whole wide world All that right. I watch is Let's back. Go. Once upon a time, season five. Mm -hmm. This is the Hub show. Although he did admit <clears throat> to me the other day that it's not as good as it used to be. Mm. So, season right. five. So here's what happened. 
a lot of mess. So they all went to the underworld to try to get Hook back. Why is Hook in the underworld? Because he died and he was the dark one and he died and he's in the underworld. Hmm. We before I forget about it, we have Hades. We found we saw Hades with the blue oh. flaming hair. Oh yes. Um he was Was he, Hercules there? I don't recall that. Um so they're there and the underworld is Storybrooke. Ooh. With the clock tower like crashed in the middle of the road. Mm. But everything Storybrooke. So they when they filmed this, they must have had like some kind of filter because it looked like kind of browny, orangish. I mean so it was Storybrooke, but it had this like tint color to it. You know what I mean? Mm. So they're looking and then Regina's mom, Cora, is there. So this was the 100th episode as well. So we got all of these people from the, the previous five seasons back. Mm. Including... From Buffy. Oh, Dad, come back. What's her name? I don't know who you're talking about. She, she played the blind witch in <clears throat> Once Upon a Time. Oh, um, Emma, Emma Caulfield? Yes. She was back. Uh, she was uh, giving a H- Hades a, a, a manicure and a pedicure. Which is interesting because she's blind. So they're looking for Hook. They can't, Did they find him? They can't find him. Then Cora tells Regina that she needs to leave. She's got a boat for her to get back to Storybrooke. That ha- she has to leave or she's going to kill her father, Regina's father, who is in the underworld. Because the only way to get out of the underworld is <clears throat> to either go to hell or go to heaven. But everybody in the underworld has unfinished business. Mm. But it all worked out because Cora tried to kill her father, but Regina like was like, no, you can't do this, and there was all this emotional stuff, and then he didn't die in the flames, and he went to heaven. Oh. Peter Pan was also back. Oh. Peter Pan is is <clears throat> Rumble Stilskin's father. And Peter Pan, the guy that played him, was in Heroes Reborn. Mm-hmm. And he, yeah, Peter Pan's evil, but he did give gold this bottle of something magic that they sprinkled over <clears throat> Hook's grave because there is a graveyard in that everybody that's in hell their grave is in Storybrooke Underworld and they poured it on his grave and he they could see him but he was he had been like beaten and well it was really bad really bad and they couldn't figure out where he is because it was like a projection of him they couldn't they still can't find him mm. I think that's about all that happened and lots of like flashbacks and old characters and things like that mm. um, but they also feel like that, that because mm. many of the people that are there in the underworld are there because of them the group of them that went down to try to save hook that they feel like they need to stay in the underworld and help everybody finish their unfinished business so they can go to heaven of course they do. Of course. Because you know we have to have a new storyline. <laughs> the end. That's all I know. Okay. Uh, and finally, Murdoch Mystery Season 9. I guess oh. he was in it. I, and was, I, I wasn't really watching. I didn't one. even know. Like the hub said. <clears throat> da, 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 and I was like, what? And I like rewound it and I was like, oh my gosh. No. That. Mm, what? No. A mustache. And very little hair. <laughs> I think it was a combination of the mustache and the very little hair that threw me. Because I was like, what? It was Rodney McKay from Stargate. Who is... David Hewlett. David Hewlett. And he was very funny. He had a swear jar. You had to pay if you swore. <laughs> and this is not swearing. But if you have children's ears, you might not hear. Or a bloody hell. <laughs> they had to pay for saying bloody hell. It was really funny. So... What happened was 
from the previous episode, they've discovered that Station House 4, no, Station House 5, they're Station House 4. Station House 5 is corrupt, and the main police guy, I don't know what his title was, but he was corrupt, and he was stealing money and embezzling and fraud and everything, mm -hmm. but they, he, like he like made it seem like it was Inspector Brackenreed and Inspector Brackenreed got arrested and then he lost his job and he had to go work for Rodney McKay and, with the swear <laughs> and he had to punch two holes in all the files mm -hmm. and he opened the door he was like how many files and they opened the door and it was like 37 bazillion files and he was like bloody hell <laughs> and he had to pay the swear jar five five cents per word mm -hmm. me too pay in the swear jar yeah. Three times now. So I owe you like 30, 30 pence? Mm -hmm. Although we need to convert that from Canadian to British pounds and adjust for uh, early 20th century inflation. Well, and the Canadian dollar apparently is very bad right now. Um, <clears throat> but Murdoch saved the day, figured it out. <sighs> Inspector Brackenreed is back with his job. And in in Turnabout is Fair Play, the bad police commissioner guy, I don't know what his title is, he is now working for Rodney K. And they open the door and all the files and bloody hell. <laughs> and that's what happened in Murdoch Mysteries. It was a good episode. The episode title was Bloody Hell but with asterisks in it. It was really funny. <laughs> It made me laugh. That's all the TV. We've probably been talking for 37 hours now about television because all the feels. All the feels. All the feels. We should move on to the next segment. And now it's time for our March, April, May, Sheepy, Spring, Cow. I, I, it, it's back. The sheep baths are yeah. back. Yeah. <laughs> they, they've come for me. Bah. So this runs from the beginning of March. Sorry, I was trying to move things off the computer so I could scroll. Through the 31st of May. It's for any project you knit, crochet, weave, or spin you can convince us is related to spring. You can do that by your project's color, color name, pattern, patterning, purpose, design element, or if you can't think of anything. You made it in the spring. That is correct. No whips are allowed. You have to start the project March 1st or later and finish it by the 31st of May. Feel free to double dip in other cows. We have prizes, and I'm putting a collage up right now of our prizes. We talk about these in detail on the first podcast of the month, or you can go to our show notes. Geekygirlsknit.com To see photos and read about them. However, we have a new prize, so I'm going to show you. Boga from Knitting in France sent stitch markers. So one person is going to win this set of stitch markers. Are you ready? You're about to get a musical interlude. <laughs> I'm late. I'm late for a very important date. No time to say hello, goodbye. I'm late. I'm late. I'm late. This is the bunny, the rabbit from Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> umbrella, umbrella, umbrella. Postmodern jukebox. Anybody? Did you get that? That's Rihanna. Yes, but Postmodern Jukebox. Yes, Postmodern Jukebox did do it, but people will help more likely know it because it's Rihanna. Uh, but I don't listen to Rihanna. I listen to Postmodern Jukebox. That's how I know any current music. Postmodern Jukebox. And then I hear the song... Umbrella is like a couple of years old, I think. <laughs> yeah, but they did it with the... with the And the dancers yes, and the umbrellas. Yes, the, the tap dancers. Sarah Reich. This is so good. And she also did The Force Awakens. The Tap Awakens. Was so good. She also did both versions of of the Lady Gaga one. The Lady Gaga one. Bad Romance. Yes. And she also did She did another one. I can't remember what it is. I it was an older make, song. I need to make like a Sarah Reich playlist. She's so good. Anyway. That's how I know. No, so what I was saying is anytime <laughs> the, a song comes on like I'm in a store or something with the original artist, I'm like, that's not how it goes. Because... I only know the postmodern jukebox versions. And the final one is Every Rose Has Its Thorn. Every Rose Has Its Thorn. So, you get a bunny, you get an umbrella, and you get a rose. That is the new prize for the cow. Every project you 
Oh, I should say thank every you. Every project has its thorn. Every project has its thorn. Sometimes more than one. I had a knitting attack this week, and I don't remember what it was, and to talk about it, I had to rip it Your out. Heel. I had to rip out this my sock heel. I had miscounted and had an extra stitch on one side. So I had to rip it out. So as Jasmine and Gigi from the Knit More Girls would say, when knitting attacks. Um, we would like to say a big thank you to our sponsors. Y'all are lovely. Thank you. Every project you finish and post in the FO thread in our Geeky Girls Knit Ravelry group uh, counts as one entry into the giveaway. You must be a member of the Geeky Girls Knit Ravelry group in order to participate. You have to post a picture, a picture of your FO, a picture of your PO. Uh, if you want to tag your photos, it's GGKSSK16. We'll lock the thread on the 1st of June and winners will be drawn on the next podcast. Um, okay. You'll have 30 days to claim your prizes if you win. And there's a chatter thread on Ravelry. And then, Danny, why don't you tell us who's finished projects this week? Okay. Crafty Nelly, DG White times three, Ellie 15. Girl in Knots, K.S. Napier, Elle McCall, Mother Z times 10, Mystery Sewer times 8. It's like over, it's like you're becoming overcome with emotion. Yeah. Piper's Mom, Rainbow Ange, The VFB, Tiny Dancer Knits, Vegan Jilly, and Yarny Mom. Yay! Great job, everybody. <clears throat> so keep working on those projects and get them posted. All right, let's move on to the next segment. Now we're going to talk about the 52 weeks of Charity Cal. Yes, this is an ongoing Cal for all of 2016. It started on the 1st of January and runs through the 31st of De December. It's for any project that you knit, crochet, or weave that you donate to charity. To be eligible for prizes, you have to complete 52 items over the course of 2016. It doesn't necessarily have to be one a week, but 52 total. Um, speaking of 52 total, let me tell you this. Danny and I added up how many FOs there have been as of whatever time this morning we did this. So in just a little over two months, there have been 178 items knit for charity. That's awesome. And we have one person who has finished 24 items, one that's finished 17, one that's finished 16, one that's finished 13, I finished 11, and then it, then we got anywhere between 1 and 9 after that. But wow, 24, 17, 16, that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, so great job, everyone. Keep going. Um, so no whips are allowed, January 1st or later. Uh, double dip in other cows, it's totally fine, including you can double dip uh, items that you knit for this cow into the sheepy spring cow. Mm -hmm. That's totally fine. Um, we have prizes, and I'm putting these up on the screen. Um, I donated one skein of West Yorkshire Spinner Signature 4-ply in the Holly Berry colorway. And for every seven people who compete, complete, you're competing to complete your 52 items in 2016, I'll add another skein of West Yorkshire Spinner's yarn. Uh, in addition, Catherine, who is Tia and Kat, donated two pom-poms, a Bernay Coral pom-pom and a Lion Brand Black Cat pom-pom. Uh, I'll separate those so that'll be two prizes. And then Mary, who is jamming to knit, donated three single patterns from her Ravelry store. So right now we have three, four, five, we have six prizes. But as people get to 52, I will be adding more skeins of yarn. Mm -hmm. um, so the FO thread is a little bit different than what we normally do. You're going to have one post in the FO thread, where you, which you edit to add all your new items. And then at the top, and I've tried to go in and make sure uh, each new post has it, at the top in bold, you need to have a running total of how many items you've finished. You can donate your items to whatever charity you would like to. If you don't have a place you want to donate to, you can send them to us and we'll make a donation to Knit for Peace. They accept anything um, hand knit, crocheted as well. Uh, that's totally fine. Um, they are kind of overrun with preemie hats right now, so we're going to donate the preemie hats to Preemies UK. You have to be a member of the Geeky Girls Knit Podcast group on Ravelry to participate. The tag is GGK52WOCCal16. That stands for Geeky Girls Knit 52 Weeks of Charity Cal 16. Um, we'll lock the thread the morning of the 1st of January and draw winners on the next podcast. You'll have 30 days to claim your prize. And there is a chatter thread on Ravelry. So um, 
keep up the good work. Y'all are amazing. 178 items finished for charity. That is amazing. Amazing. Um, all right. Well, we have a question to answer, so we should move on to the next segment. And now it's time for Ask the Geeky Girls, the part of our show where you ask us things and we answer them. That's right. What's this week's question? This week's question comes from Christina, who is Bill in 87 from Sweden. I am planning on knitting a Weasley sweater for my sister who really likes the series. I was that, that's Harry Potter in case you don't know, just in case. Yes. I was thinking of making it in green and something for the initial. Can you give me some tips for yarn? I don't like synthetic yarns and the pattern calls for a heavy worsted yarn. Thanks a lot. Love the podcast. Christina. Thanks for asking the question, Christina. Well, um, I went through and found some yarns to suggest, um, and I know Dammy agrees on these yarns. <laughs> Because we tend to have similar yarn liking preferences. Preferences. That's it. So, um, so the pattern calls for heavy worsted. So what I looked at is Aaron-ish weight for the most part. Um, because heavy worsted, because in the UK we don't tend to have worsted weight. So Aaron is about heavy worsted weight. So that's what I tended to look for. So two um, yarns that I could recommend that are not indie dyed are West Yorkshire Spinners. Um, they have an Air Valley Aaron weight yarn. They also have a BFL Aaron and a Jacob Aaron. And um, I have worked with so much West Yorkshire Spinners and adore it. And it's got a very good price point. For example, you're working with it right now on your socks. 100 gram skein of fingering weight. Does one of those have the price on it? I want to say it's something like 750 or something. Yes. 7 pounds 50p for 100 grams of fingering weight. So it's a very good price point. The other one that I could recommend is Brigantia Erin. Um, the Miranda sweater that I knit in that pistachio green that was Brigantia and it's another really good price point uh, all these yarns I've linked in the show notes so you don't have to go searching for them you can just go to the show notes now indie dyed indie dyed uh, first up I would recommend Ginger's hand dyed which is from Ginger Twist Studio which is our local yarn store just dyes some gorgeous yarn so she has three different errands um there's the Super Sheep Erin, which is a Super Wash BFL. There's the Sturdy Splendor Erin, which is a Merino Silk. And there's the Humming Erin, which is Alpaca, Merino, and Nylon. And they're all very squishy. I've squished them all. Um, from Julia of Pandy is Jewels, she has uh, the Comfy Base, which is a Super Wash Merino Wool. From Michelle at Very Colorful Yarnings, her primary base is a Super Wash Merino. From Boga of Knitting in France, she has two Erin Waits. She has an Erin Weight Winsleydale and an Erin Weight Organic Merino. And then from Rainbow Heirloom, her sweater base, uh, which actually Emily of Tin Can Knits is no longer doing Rainbow Heirloom. Um... Not for any bad reasons, but just because uh, it was time to move on. But her previous assistant who was helping with that has taken over the business. And I want to say her name is Nina. I believe that's right. But I'm knitting with Rainbow Heirloom Sweater right now for my um, Queensland Bay headband. And I can highly recommend this. It's a super wash merino base. Um, and she does, um, I linked it in the show notes, she does custom dye orders. So, um, I would recommend that. So that's our recommendations, uh, Christina. We gave you a couple of, uh, more general and then several hand dyed. So we hope one of those will help you find the perfect yarn for your Weasley sweater. That was a very good question. Thanks for asking. Um, so, Dammy, if somebody has a question for us, what should they do? Go to our Ask Geeky Girls thread in our Ravelry group and post it. And then we'll answer it. Sorry, my voice is going. 
we'll answer it. Um, and then you can ask us pretty much anything. So we love y'all's questions, so keep asking them. All right, we have a prize winner to announce. Let's move on to the next segment. Now it's time for a giveaway. Actually, two giveaways. Two giveaways. So first up, we want to announce the winner of the um, competition giveaway thread. Um, Holly, who is Lupin Owns Jacob, um, offered up one copy of her Chelsea Beach shawl pattern, um, which we talked about in detail a couple episodes ago. And we had a thread open in the Ravelry group, and we closed the thread and asked Siri to give us a random number, and she gave us... Number 19. Who is? Penelope, who is Mother Z. So Mother Z, congratulations. Please send me Java Pearl, a PM on Ravelry, and once you've seen this, and then I will let Holly know so she can get the pattern to you. We also want to remind you about the Addicted to Sock Knitting magazine giveaway. Uh, we reviewed an issue of this in last week's episode. Deborah has donated a one-year subscription, which includes four issues, starting with the winter issue. So to enter, you need to go to her website, addictedtosockknitting.com, and find your favorite item in her shop, and then come back to the Ravelry, our Ravelry group uh, and find the giveaway thread and post that in there to enter, and we will announce the winner in next week's episode. Um, and for any competitions and prizes, you have 30 days to claim your prize or you forfeit it. Um, that's it. Let's move on to the next segment. I didn't know if we were going to make it without my voice going completely out. Goodness, we did. So, an announcement. Next week's episode, episode 184, will be live on Tuesday the 15th of March instead of Thursday the 17th of March because of Edinburgh Yard Festival. We will be setting up on Thursday the 17th. So we will record next Monday the 14th and push it live on Tuesday the 15th. Mm -hmm. um, do we have any other announcements other than that? I don't think so. Okay, so just our normal announcements. Huge thank you to our Patreon sponsors. Patreon is a way that you can donate to support your favorite podcast, artists, etc. Um, and we have rewards that we give away based on your level of donation. And I posted out those on Friday. I posted out this past month's rewards. Um, so if you want to know more about this, you can go to patreon.com slash geekygirlsnet to find out all about it. And thank you so much to our Patreon sponsors. If you, uh, oh, I should say, we use, we're use we saving that money up in a savings account to use to purchase some things to better the podcast technologically. So uh, once we have enough, we'll start purchasing the different components. Uh, if you'd like to make a one-time donation to the podcast, you can go to our website, geekygirlsnet.com, and there's a PayPal button at the top of the website. Um, we are also Amazon.com and Amazon.co.uk affiliates. So if you click through our website, HeGirlsNet.com, and then shop on Amazon, Amazon gives us a little money back based on what you purchase. It doesn't cost you anything, but it's a great way to support the podcast. We use that money primarily to ship prizes um, and occasionally purchase prizes and business cards and things like that. So thank you for shopping on Amazon. All right, I think that's everything, Dammy. Why don't you tell them where they can find us online? You can find us at geekygirlsknit.com. There are the links to everywhere else we are online. YouTube, iTunes, Ravelry, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, etc. That's right. So with that, we'll tell you we hope you have a great rest of your week. Um, happy knitting, and we'll talk to you on Monday. Bye. Bye. So I've been thinking about Ravelry names for you because you said you were going to change it. How about, it's Dammy. Or, I'm Dammy. <laughs> we're recreating a conversation we did not record. Uh, Let's go with it, okay? Uh, I was thinking about something art-related. <laughs> art-related? Art-related. Like? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Damn. <laughs>
<laughs> Daily's Doodles. Daily's Doodles, because you're like really into drawing. You could do something like the drawer, Dammy. That would look like drawer. <laughs> the drawer. The drawer, Dammy. Um, the drawer. Dammy draws. Ooh, that's a good one. I hadn't thought of that one previously in our previous conversation. Dammy draws. Drawing Dammy. Draw it, Dammy. <laughs> that almost sounds like a bad home. Where's the swear jar? <laughs> Draw it, Dammy. <laughs> Any other thoughts? I'm being watched. Who's watching you? Oh! <laughs> I was like, there's nobody else here! Who are you talking about? That was weird. He said, you know where I'm being watched by a headless upper torso. We didn't show this on the podcast when I bought it, so it's actually for, our, for my EYF booth. It's a um, tabletop torso, half torso. For the coffee date shawl to go on. <laughs> but I did, I was looking for some stuff in the TARDIS bag, which actually sits on the other side of this bookshelf that has mannequin feet in it. And so the torso got moved around. And so now the headless torso is watching. Is it going to come alive, like from Doctor Who? Mm. Draw it, Dammy. <laughs> <laughs> 